Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, thank you for that very kind introduction. It's a great privilege to be here in this wonderful city, um, and it's a great privilege to have the opportunity to introduce this subject. I think it's probably fair to say that the uh, proposals put forward by the European Commission last week represent a sea change in the approach to regulation uh, of the accounting profession and it's probably fair to say the potential, depending on how they turn out, to be, make the biggest changes to the accounting profession for very many years. Now, uh, I've been asked to introduce this panel, this panel session, and therefore my aim is to set the scene to explain the proposals that the EC has put forward. Uh, Philip Johnson will cover some pro uh, proposed changes to the fourth and seventh directives, so I have not covered those. I want to start by emphasizing that in my view you cannot look at the uh, proposals being put forward by the EC without, as they affect the SME community without understanding them in their larger and wider context. Um, so I'm going to focus to some degree on what the uh, Commission proposes in relation to public interest entities because it's against that background that one looks at the SME community. Now, as the slide says, uh, post the financial crisis and after everyone had had an opportunity to discuss the role of the banks and various other players in the financial community, questions began to be asked about the effectiveness of corporate governance, of financial reporting, of audit quality, and the structure of the audit market. And what's unusual about the debate, and which I think has substantially changed the debate, is that for the first time in Europe, that the issues have engaged both politicians and the media. If you recall after Enron and WorldCom, whilst there was political interest in the US, the UK, the EC, and most of the rest of the world looked at the issues post Enron and WorldCom through the roles of organizations that specialized or were technically expert in the area. The politicians and the media did not get involved in what reforms were required. But that changed as a result of the financial crisis. And we now have a very different constituency of people uh, influencing the debate. And to be clear, that debate is taking place throughout the world, in Europe, in the UK, in the US, and I'll touch on those as we go forward. Now, one of the areas that has concerned uh, the Commissioner, Commissioner Barnier, has been the level of concentration in the audit market. He asserts that it lacks choice and is inadequately competitive. And he, when he talks about inadequate competition, he focuses, I think, not so much on price, but on innovation. And as a result, the EC has put forward last week, and I'll come to the detail in a minute, a number of proposals that are designed to increase the number of major audit firms and therefore to stimulate competition in the marketplace. The second area of concern has been what I would describe as the information gap. Whether users have the information they need to assess the performance and make judgments about the future of the companies that they invest in. And there are a number of aspects of that. The complexity and length of annual reports, lack of clarity about what businesses are doing and how their strategy is developing and the risks associated with that strategy, and absence of information about key issues that have exercised the auditors and management in preparing the financial statements. To many, the audit is a black box. What you get at the end of an audit is an opinion which is expressed for the most part as yes, the accounts show a true and fair view or are, pro or are properly prepared, or no, they weren't. 
and very few say, no, they weren't, fortunately. But the, because so little is said about what has gone on in developing and reaching that opinion, the opinion that the account showed true and fair view, observers, users of accounts, question whether they fully understand what the issues are and how they should assess the, the integrity of the financial reporting. That never used to be the case, but as complexity has in, increased through globalization, that is certainly an issue now. There has been continuing concern at what the provision of non-audit services does to the relationship between auditors and the company they audit. My own personal view, and in the UK we undertook a very extensive study in this area, is that this issue is primarily one of perception. There are very, very few examples, certainly in the UK, of instances where one could say that an audit judgment was wrong or came about uh, as a, an, in error because of the provision of non-audit services to the entity concerned. Nevertheless, in an environment where the public expects the auditor to be giving a, an independent and in many ways um, a challenging assessment of the financial statements, the provision of related services to the audit firm, audit, audited entity, does undermine confidence. That's led, certainly in the UK and now we see in, Europe, in the European proposals, to an increased focus on what we've described as audit-related services, services which are necessarily given in conjunction with the audit and totally non-audit services. Examples of audit-related services would be a review of the interim statement or a work done in relation to other aspects of the annual report. Non-audit services includes things like due diligence on proposed acquisitions. One thing it is, impor is important to emphasize, although this all started and the European Union's interest in this began through concerns at what had happened in the financial services sector, the reforms that were announced last week are without doubt addressed to the whole of the corporate sector. Now what is it that Europe is proposing to put forward? They're proposing to issue a directive which will amend the statutory audit directive. For the most part, that directive applies to all auditors and all companies that are audited. Secondly, it proposes to issue a regulation. The regulation is primarily, if not exclusively, directed at auditors and the companies being audited who fall in the category of public interest entities. There is some considerable significance in the choice of a directive and a regulation as the means by which Europe chooses to implement these changes. Because a directive merely, merely tells the member states to put in place legislation to achieve what is in the directive, whereas the regulation has immediate impact in the explicit terms of that regulation and thereby become part of the member state law. Now I'm going to start with the regulation because I think it's the regulation that sets the scene. And let me say with some apology, although I totally understand and support the principle that one should think small first, I think one should understand the regulation proposes to clarify the scope of the statutory audit, and I'm pleased to say that the Euro Europe resisted the temptation. It proposes the prohibition of the provision of non-audit services to public interest entities. There are certain qualifications and to operate as I suspect the Commission intended, but having said that, the significant message is that the amount of services, the nature of the services that firms will be able to provide to public very significantly, in, in my view, they propose the mandatory rotation of auditors of public interest entities. 
That is not just uh, quite a striking development in itself, but when I add that the period of rotation is six years, you will appreciate the very significant impact that this will ha have on the operation of the audit market and on the costs and burdens both of auditors and the companies they, they audit. Only firms, so that literally the only service they provide is the audit of statutory, entity, statutory audit of entities um, for those that are the very biggest of the current uh, uh, audit firms. That would involve a divestment picture. The regulation proposes lifting audit firm ownership restrictions, those that of the audit firm, a considerable strengthening of the role of the audit supervisory bodies, and a strength